was uh how's it going this friday it's friday after the uh, smoke apocalypse here in the northeast of the united states it's a lot nicer and clearer let me tell you it's nice to be able to breathe crazy days everything's fine though right everything's fine nothing to worry about who we got in the chat today <clears throat> let me clear my throat we got martin crockett red five standing by hey stevie steve Leich. all right skirmantis hello arsene Baumeister. Hey, people from the world. And Simple Sam. I just can't shake Simple Sam. He's been there from the beginning, pretty much. A few of you have. Long time viewers. Hey, Luminous Cloud. Lu uh, mm. My tongue just stopped working. Hey, Luminous Cloud. Get back to work. Marcus Shogu, what's up? Still working on the same track today, Marcus. I'll leave it up to you whether it's hot stuff or not. We got Rex84 in the UK. All right. So, enough yammering. And, well, one more thing. If you notice from the title, it says Focus Fridays. I got my camera off and I'm gonna try even a little harder than last time to uh, try to get into the music mode and you know try to focus on my work all right so let's do that let's do that and um <laughs> hey baby hooligan hey vndm hey aaron 303 nice to see you you know what before i dive into uh my project here i'll just say my due diligence, since we are 343 Labs Music Production School here in New York City and in Berlin and online and here on 343 TV. If you want to know more, you got the uh, links in the description below. Especially check out our uh, upcoming year program which we're all very excited about big things coming so oh and then i have another I, I have a i have something to share with you guys today stick around later in the later in the show we'll share we have uh goodies goodies to share with loyal viewers so stay tuned all right we're just going to jump straight into Ableton Live. Here we go. So yeah, I've been working on this track little by little. You've seen most of the process. It started out with uh, making this granular thing in phase plant. Right? This was what the whole track is based around. And this has turned into a track that I kind of like, right? So we've, you know, over, this might be the fourth time I've done, worked on this track on the show. And, you know, as I mentioned last time, it was like getting into the details and trying to kind of finish it. And, and, and I feel like I'm almost done. It could be done, but I'm still kind of you know, dwelling on the details, on the mix, on the automation, still even deciding if I might add an element or two here and there. So that's where we're at. We are at that point where we're very close to it being done. And it's me obsessing about the details, basically. So yeah, let's listen a little bit. Let's listen a little bit to, to what we've got here. Hope 
hopefully the law uh, the levels are good for you guys i'm trying to keep the monitors down in here so it's not doubling up on the mic too much i would like to pump it a little bit but all right i feel like that rim shot's a little too loud i'm gonna back that up a couple of db hi-hat's a little too loud. Pull that back a little bit. Yes, Skirmantis, this is where I left the project last. I, <laughs> I, have, I meant to work on it in between, but I didn't. So this is exactly where we were. Clip it a little bit in the glue compressor. So far, so pretty good, I guess. I still feel like that main 909 hat, hat could be a little sharp, a little too loud, I don't know. Maybe if I play with the compressor a little bit. I mean, it's already snapping down pretty hard. feel like that room shot's too loud. Or maybe it needs some compression. Ah, okay. We just reduce that transient a little bit. There's also no EQ on it, go figure. some change after that transition. Okay. Oh, that's funny, like that room shot has a lot of low end on it somehow. Which might be okay. I'm gonna reduce it a little bit. Filter claps in there, sounding relatively under control. Baby Hooligan. We had that question last week, why is it 133.33? Someone in the chat explain what that means. All right, that transition sounded fine.
Okay, almost done with this. Listening to the whole arrangement through. I feel like that hi-hat really sticks out there. Maybe it's so bright. Maybe I'll like reduce the level or filter it out a little bit or something. Or like, you know what? This also has no compression on it, which I kind of like to do sometimes for very sharp sounds like that. Just grab a little bit of that peak to smooth it out just slightly. Really fast attack, just a slightly. Actually, I'm even going to put that after the reverb. I put it after the reverb. It's kind of gel the reverb and the hi-hat together a little bit. Yeah, you can kind of, it sounds a little, there's a little bit more ambience to that, <laughs> just slightly. I do this, here, here's me obsessing. <laughs> it's just slightly, I'm going to make this very kind of sharp. Hi-hat kind of start to disappear by filtering it. I'm just, you know, low pass. Okay, that's the end though. Why am I obsessing about the end? Right, where am I? So there were a couple of transitions that I want to finesse a little bit more. I think I still, you know, I didn't quite figure out ex exactly where I wanted that ride, that 909 ride. I'm on the fence about, you can hear the snappiness. I remember like last time I was trying to get the kick to punch through a little bit more. I mean, ended up putting the transient shaper on there, but it also has that snap, which I don't always like the snap. So when the phase retrigger is off, sometimes it snaps, sometimes it doesn't. When the phase retrigger is on, it always snaps. And maybe it's okay. What do we think? It's probably all right. Maybe I'm just not, I mean, I shouldn't worry about it too much. Not that I want to make this too hardcore or anything, but and when you clip it, that snappiness kind of gets swallowed up. Do you guys ever play with this? If those of you who are Ableton Live users and you use Saturator, and I use it all the time, even though there's all those fancy, crazy saturators out there. This thing is really powerful. You know, to tilt the frequency range, you know, that's doing more distortion to the low end, and that's doing less. And then I'm like driving it harder and it's clipping the high frequencies more, but it's not over clip, it's not over clipping the lows. That's powerful. I have to say, to be able to, you can really, remember, obsessing over details, that's what we're doing, still. I kind of, it's a little warmer now. That's sort of what I wanted. I want this balance of like warmth and then pop in that kick. Now that I messed up my level, let's see what it's doing in here. Yeah, it's a little loud. So the first transition, where when that synth comes in, this is sort of one thing I was listening to. a little more feet 
back, a little more exaggerated flanging on that DS symbol. Swimming around your head in your headphones, hopefully. Luminous cloud. You can use saturation just to give warmth. It doesn't have to distort and be dirty. I would say you need to be using saturation on all sorts of things. All right, so it was this sort of trend. This is what, all right, I'm focusing in. I'm focusing, I'm focusing. It's focus mode. I'm not getting distracted by luminous cloud. can I accentuate this transition? The first thing I'm going to do is take away some of those syncopated kicks at the very end before it comes back. Let it sort of hang in the air a little bit. And I want to create more contrast there. What happens if I take a hi-hat away? Let's see. Is that too much? that going down too much. I like the contrast though. symbol, the 909 ride to be happening. And this is also where the, I add the extra bar. Okay, I'm going to try something. I'm going to get rid of the ride symbol. about the extra bar. Maybe it's okay there because that's where you feel it the most. I don't know. I'm going to bring the ride symbol back. Flipping it around here. This is like a little bit of a tease. It's a little weird. Maybe I want that, maybe I don't. Okay. It's like unexpected slightly. I kind of want to have a little bit of unexpected, as if this were a real, like if I, I, I want it to have the feel of the live jam, I think, where it's not perfect, even though I'm being hypersensitive about the details. <laughs> Try some pitch modulation automation on the ride. Oh, it's gonna step. Okay, here's where sometimes you 
can hear that it's it's stepping down chromatically. That's not what we want. I'm gonna unmap this. Remove mapping. Delete automation. And just do it directly. Now, I can get the smooth. Alright, that's obviously too, uh, too much. Now I can get the smooth, unstepped. As if I'm turning the knob on the real 909. You know, it could stay up and then turn. I don't know. Dan Zo, the synth is um, live as analog, and there's two of them. Necessary, but it sounds okay. Okay, no, I want the pitch not to, to do that. the kick drum go now about having the ride symbol there.
okay. It's getting pretty noisy. I'm gonna try taking out this tiny little hi hat. string with the uh, the granular crickets a little longer. I was thinking about Uh, yeah, uh, let's leave the end for the end. Let's put a Oxford inflator on it. Just kidding. Let's put a saturator set to soft sign. <laughs> Cloud, use saturators. <laughs> Just wanted to thicken the mix up a little bit, give it some tone in addition to how it already sounds, right? Thank you. Is it uh, Mikhail or Michelle? Michael? Mikhail? Squila? Thank you. Glad you like the uh, evolution. Move talk. Um, am I saying that right? Do I even have the inflator? You're asking about the Oxford inflator and why I use the saturator instead. I don't even have Oxford inflator. The reason why is that the soft sign setting of, of live saturator is like nine, it's like almost identical to what the inflator does. There's a YouTube video on it if you look it up. A guy does like an AB and, and I think he even like nulls, you know, he does like a phase inversion to show the difference. It's almost exactly the same. It sounds so close to what an inflator does that it is good enough for me. Michael, okay, sorry. I should have just defaulted to the right, the, the English, regular English <laughs> pronunciation rather than getting overly complicated about it. All right. I was thinking, it's, I was doing the, the wet, dry balance on the granular. Here, I was going to have it start more granular and then fade into the string. But then it kind of comes in late, doesn't it? Well, we can fix that.
there's a buffer with granular effects. With this, you know, the, it goes into the buffer and then it plays, you'll hear it start. Yeah, see, yeah, it's the, the MIDI set is starting at 46, but we're not hearing the effect until a few beats later. Weird. Maybe I won't do this. It's overcomplicating things. Or I could fade it in. That would be the other way to handle it. I'm not going to make it. I think it's fine just starting like that. I mean, the other way to handle would be to fade it in. Or just make it quieter in the beginning so it eases in a little bit. pressure on this. I was wondering if I wanted this to kind of sit a little more in the mix. Maybe I'll just compress it a bit less. So it only more it kind of kicks in on the peaks later. Speed up the attack on this one. Cloud, getting Adam X as a guest would be great. I need to reach out. We haven't seen him in a while. So, it's funny, I was saying earlier that the 909 hi hat sounds like it's too loud and now right there I feel like it's not loud enough I mean I could automate it and then right there like the ride symbol really kind of covers it up maybe the oh panning right separation. Now right there where I added some delay to the rides when I did the pitch bend at the end. What if I do it? Whoa, come on, geez. How wide do these automation lanes need to be anyway? Smooth, maybe a little less of that would be good. All right, let's experiment a little bit here. Is that too much to take out all the percussion?
could be a little fuller there. Thanks, Move Talk. All right, definitely pop. Polyrhythm, polymetric, brain slapping. Totally cool with me. You get the feeling like when it's a little monotonous. Right? You can kind of help that out a little bit. And I'm totally going, I remember like last time, I like I wanted to be more smooth. And I've changed my mind. I want it to be more contrasting right on that beat. Get, get the clappy, swirly clappy thing some space to come out. Maybe that goes down too far there though. Yeah, it's funny. I'm, I'm trading one section for another now. Like here it was fuller, and then this one I wanted it to be less. And now in the section before, it's less, and I want this one to be fuller. Like, make up your mind. No, not that. Maybe just do both. I'll start bright and then you can take it down. That's a maybe. It's pretty trippy to have the the ride pitch bending down while the other crazy stuff's going on. Again, I, I'm looking for contrast. That's kind of cool, actually. Bringing it down more. And then we really hear the, the phase plant sound. I hate you, Mark. You're making your work more dramatic, huh? <laughs> All right, let me hear this section again. It's a, I'm, I'm wondering if it's a little messy. Maybe I don't need the ride there. We can bring it in halfway because I like the pitch bend thing. It's kind of weird to have rides coming out of nowhere for me, though. I don't know. Something. I'm not sure. We could fade them in as part of that build. 
do if I was playing live and the rides were on their own channel I'd like fade them up on the mixer I'm going to take away the hi-hats that's what I'm going to do especially the 909 Gonna do the opposite of what the rides are doing. Percussion sounds, all the high frequency percussion sounds are gonna. Well, the, the ride's gonna go up and all the short ones are gonna go down. Make some space for all the other craziness that's happening. Yeah, I think it helps to take the. to, to simplify the percussion there. Again. <laughs> out with the granular. So much of this is just playing with the effects, dubbing out the effects. Oh, here we go. I might have to do this again in another part. You're kind of losing the rhythm. It's getting more continuous. It's a little stuttery at the end. I'm not sure about the very end, but I kind of like where that's going. section though. Or is it too much? Let's see. transitions again just to enhance
make it more grainy. Too weird there? I don't know. I still like it. kind of automation I try to make I try to do the automation as if I were turning knobs so like when and also some of this was recorded in real time you can see these ones with all the breakpoints this was me it wasn't a knob on the MIDI controller but I was recording myself you know playing with the sound and in, in recording the autumn in you know recording the tweaks in real time um, and yeah that does give it a more unexpected you know, kind of feel more human in a way. But when I do it, this precisely just adding breakpoints, I try to sort of emulate what I might do if I was turning a knob, right? So like every time I add a breakpoint, that's like me turning the knob. And okay, some of them are smooth like this, but I try to go in and finesse it. Like that that's me like turning the knob up and down subtly, right? And I add breakpoints as I go. So I kind of try to do it i try to edit the envelopes in almost in real time but yeah that's what i would say about that M move talk wants a weird verby alien foghorn you want a brom <laughs> brom <laughs> maybe maybe i'll take that under advisement anyway back to messing up my sound with the unison detuning It gets really intense here and i'm wondering should i go overboard and make it more intense more crazy with the detuning of that sound You heard what I'm doing? Let's listen to it by itself. We're doing, we're increasing the amount of detuning of the unison voices so it gets more out of tune. 
a little more ravey sounding. There's more in tune when it goes down and now less in tune as it goes up. It's subtle, but I notice it. Now that I've opened up this Pandora's box of automating every little thing, I'm going to have to keep doing it now. there where they both kind of go out of tune. So subtle though. That one might be a little loud there. We'll see. Do I need to bring the filter down on this? It's very loud. Just a little bit back is better. All right, and there is where it's maybe a little bit much on the grainy stuff. It got pretty loud. I'm gonna bring it back a little bit. So trippy. almost done? Am I going too crazy on all the details of this automation? Does it make sense in the big picture? We might have to listen to this one more time beginning to end. Like, I won't even talk. We'll all just listen to it together as a whole and see how we feel. Like, if there's still anything missing, are there any things that I need to, you know, little details I need to fill in that are so it's more consistent. We've had a suggestion for a new part, like a, a alien foghorn. I feel like that's a. Li I, I like those sounds for sure. It might be a tad cliche in a way to do that, but. All right. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm not gonna say a word, and we're gonna listen to this from the beginning. I'm gonna uh, maybe like. Uh, mute my microphone or something so i'm gonna and i'm gonna blast it here in the studio so i can really really feel it and then you know because the speakers are are uh you know that's why i feel like i should play with the mic for a second so here we go
This is really focus mode now. No talking, just listening and paying attention to the whole big picture. All right.
Okay. Hi, Karsten Becker. Thanks very much. Glad you like it. So, yeah, I was trying to, you know, get into the zone when I was listening to that and uh, try to feel it a little bit more. I had the speakers cranked up in here, and um, I it's, it could be done. I think we could have said it was done last week, but I, you know, for me, the 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 getting deep into the details and shaping it and eking out a little bit of extra energy or vibe or whatever, right? Like, you know, there's a limit to this. There's a point at which it's diminishing returns. Like how much more improved is it going to be? And if you change it too much, you know, like it turns into a different track than your original idea. So I have this whole time I've had ideas. Maybe I could add this. Maybe I could add that. Maybe I could radically change this and compared to that, whatever. And, but I, I, I'm resisting the urge to go too far with that. So yeah, Karsten master and release. Um, and it is very hypnotic. That's true. Stevie. Um, okay. It is two 37. I'm going to, I'm going to say hello. And I promised, um, uh Oh, that's the wrong one. Let's do this one. That's better. All right. So cause I don't have my green screen on today. Uh, I, I promised that I have a little something to share with you guys, all of you who have hung out to the end. Um, and basically I've got a couple of releases le recently, right? That we've got some remixes I did for art, artist Apal. And I went a little crazy and I did like a techno mix and then I did another version of the techno mix and then I did an electro mix and I did another version of the electro mix. And I was going to like pick the two best ones, but then they're like, yeah, let's just put them all out. Fine. We'll put out all four of these similar <laughs> remixes. But, um, I have some codes, some free download codes for this release. And all right, so that's one. I'm going to say I've got five codes for this release on Bandcamp to give away. All right. And I've got five codes for this is still on pre order. This is a new serotonin release. It's a label I do with BPMF. And uh, we've been doing this since the 90s on and off. It, it, I mean, it took us <laughs> since the 90s to put out uh, 27 releases. So we've been working kind of slow. But anyway, these are remixes of a track I did in the 90s from Radioactive Man and Sync 24 and Transparent Sound. So any of you who are like real electro fans, it should be right up your alley. But so I've got five free download codes for this. And I've got five free download codes for the Depths remixes. And... Hopefully there are enough of you still in the chat right now, but um, what I'm going to say is, let's see, the first five people, let's do these one at a time, all right? If, if you're interested in the, getting a free copy of the Depths EP, the first five people, just type the number one in the chat, all right? Just type the number one in the chat, the first five of you. To type number one in the chat, I will take your names and we will get you these codes. I'm going to give you like, uh, you know what? Yeah, there we go. Let's see. We got Data Rebel, Baumeister, Stevie, Grayson. Okay, that's it. That's it for... Let's do it this way. All right. <laughs> I didn't think of this. I didn't think of this uh, uh, properly to like be organized about this. This is the first time I'm doing anything like this, so forgive me. All right, how many have we? How many have we got here? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. I'm going to, all right, I'll, I'll keep to my original idea. Hopefully this is fair for everybody. The first five of you that responded with number one. Okay, we're done. We're done with number one. <laughs> all right. I'm going to write down all of your names. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to 
I'm going to have you, uh, I'm, in, I'm trying to think, should, what's the best place to share the, because I need like contact for you guys. I need to be able to send you the codes. So um, I'll give you an email. I'm going to give you an email. You guys can email. I'll get you the codes. Okay. So, all right. Now we're going to do the electro release. We're going to do the serotonin release. And first five people to put number two into the chat. You guys, if you want the serotonin release. And beef, you know, it's okay. I think, should we, should we let the people who didn't get number one priority for number two? Maybe we'll do it that way. Yeah, don't double dip. <laughs> All right, we've got five for number two. Um, although Luminous Cloud, did you get number one? You didn't get number one, so that's fair. All right, that's it. I'm going to save these names um, so I know who gets it. And um, what email should we have you guys email? Because it's going to be easier for all you guys to email me than uh, for me to... E for yeah, I sh yeah, we shouldn't do it that way. So let's do this. Let's do... Um, I'm going to spell it out. I'm not going to type it in the chat. I don't want it to be there for perpetuity in the chat, but um, I want you to email uh, sales, S-A-L-E-S. -S, here, at, at serotoninusa.com. That's what you're going to do. I know I should have thought there's got to be a better way to do this. I should have set up a link for you to click on. There's a definitely a more professional way to do this. So do you guys have that? Screw it. I'm just going to put it in the chat. It's fine here. Email me there. Be honest, <laughs> but I have your names. I know who, I know which of you get the codes and I'll reply to you guys with the codes so you can get your free downloads. All right. That could have been smoother. That could have been done a little bit better, but, uh, thanks for playing. Uh, thanks for watching today as I come out of focus mode and into marketing my new releases mode. And, uh, that's it for now. I will, uh, see you guys next week. Thanks as always for watching and, uh, hanging out in the chat and, uh, we'll switch it up a little bit next week. I think we'll probably do some electro next week because I'm going to, I'm going to finish up this track. It's like, it's 90 something percent, right? I think we're there. So thanks for helping me out with that and, uh, enjoy your week. Adios.